the module of the SETI, the first temple, which is the grandfather of our little series of grandson, father and grandfather. So Seti the first um, was not the uh, this this was a new dynasty. Horam Heb appointed the family. They had run out of um, royals. Horam Heb had not got an, an heir that he felt um, appropriate to pass on to, or his heir had died, and he appointed this family that consisted of Ramses the first. Seti the first and Ramses the second. So when he appointed the family as the new dynasty, he knew that there were three generations. It was safe for three generations. Now Ramses the first wasn't on the throne for very long. He was quite elderly, died after 18 months. So now we have Seti, who probably when the uh, family was appointed was a um, middle-aged person or um, middle-aged by Egyptian standards. So he took this appointment very seriously and he was a very pious person. Um, you know, whenever you see wall decoration with Seti appearing, he's offering to the gods, he's bowing, he's kneeling, uh, you know, he looks as though he doesn't consider himself equal with the gods. Unlike his son Ramses II, who always portrays himself um, standing upright facing the gods. Well, not always, but a lot of the time does. So Seti has a much more, my God, I made it to Pharaoh kind of attitude. Um, he uh, uses raised relief instead of incised relief. So he hammers away the background and leaves the relief standing proud, whereas Ramses II wants lots and lots and lots and lots of decoration, so he goes for the incised relief. Um, he was, uh, those dates, 1290 to 1279, he was responsible for a lot of Karnak and KV-17, which is one of these special tombs you need mega special permission, mega money, um, sort of, you know, applying 17 years in advance kind of thing um, to get in. But if you ever do get the chance of getting into the tomb of Seti the First, or if they open it at all, um, get in there. It's absolutely stunning. It is really, really, really high quality relief. He's also responsible for the temple at Abydos and the Osirion, which is a, another very highly religious site. It was quite a place of pilgrimage. Um, if you were an ancient Egyptian, you all hoped to go to Abydos. Now, the plan of the temple, this is actually a photograph of the sign there. So it's quite good because it has a plan and it has this uh, picture of what it looked like and that one there. So, um, you know, you're getting used to it now. First pylon, open court, second pylon. Open court, small Hapasar hall, sanctuaries, temple palace, sacred water here, here it's a well, magazine storage areas. Now, if you remember when we were in the Ramesseum, the magazine storage areas were massive. Here, they're much, much smaller. So, you know, Seti's not quite so grandiose about things. Um, but the, the um, for my mind, the most interesting thing about the temple is, do you remember everywhere in the Ramesseum, it's Ramses, 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 Ramses. Right, well, we've got these sanctuaries across here dedicated to various gods. Down here, we've got the sun altar. Um, we, we, this is our, you know, the, the, the temple parts here. This is dedicated here to Ramses the first. Do you know what bit is Seti? You go out here at the back, that little tiny bit there. So it's it's not even really a part of the main temple. It's this little tiny bit at the back there. So yes, it's his memorial temple. Yes, it has the royal cult in it. But 
he's not making a big deal of himself there. And in fact, he does a bigger, um, you know, part of the temple to his father Ramses the first, who never has a chance to um, build his own mortuary temple. So this is what it looks like today. Now this one's been restored by the Germans. And what they did here is, unlike the Swiss, is they built low walls to indicate to you where the pylons were. So this is the second pylon here. So we've got a little bit of the remnants of it. And then they built these mud brick walls round to show you the dimensions. And you have to imagine it going up the top, uh, you know, to the higher level. But the back of the temple here is in good condition, and that colonnade, as you can see, is rather nice. It has three entrances. This is the bit for Ramses I. This is the main temple here, and this is the bit for the sun court. Now, before you go in there, in the first courtyard, there is, it was reused, and there is a Roman villa and a tiny, tiny, tiny little church. They reckon that the church may have only held 20 people. And in this picture here, do you see that curve there? That's the nave of the church. And this bit here is the Roman villa. Again, they've just done sort of low walls to show you the size of the rooms. This is the village at the back. And um, the, the kids often hang around up there and shout at you and, Ask you for pennies and sweets. Now this is a temple palace. Um, again, I quite like what they've done. The um, original bits of the column bases are there, but they've done some reconstructions for you, so you can see what they look like. Um, it's a small temple palace. You've got this antechamber here. You've got the audience room there, and you've got a couple of rooms off either side. So. This isn't where they lived. It was just where they had a, um, it, it, it was his pavilion while he was visiting the temple. Um, it wasn't a place where, it, he probably didn't even sleep overnight here. Um, he just, it was a shady place to come while he was visiting the temple. Now, this in the, um, in that first antechamber there is the steps going to the window of appearances. Now, it, it would have had um, walls here, and there would just have been a window at the top of the steps. And this is where Pharaoh would have gone up, and he would have uh, um, given rewards to his uh, courtiers, viziers, generals, etc., and um, I, I have to admit that uh, we use this site when I do kids tours and we all have to stand at the window of appearances and pretend to be generals and scribes and geeks and things and it's all jolly fun. Um, you've no idea how much fun it is to dress up a grown man as a Hittite princess in a belly dancing outfit. Um, we've had a lot of fun there. Um, but <laughs> um, th this... Uh, is the more secular part, if you like, of that temple. And this is the more sacred part over here. Now this is Seti himself. This is a bit of incised relief, but again, you can see it's different from Ramses. It's not dug in quite so deep. And um, do you remember my old friend Sheshat there with the part notch palm rod indicating lots and lots of years? And there's Seti. And there's Armin and Mut, and he's offering a little um, uh, a god statue to the gods here um, as his sort of pious duty. Um, inside the temple, you will find some odd bits of colour, not a massive amount, but um, there is some colour inside in the various rooms. And this is the area of the main hyperstyle hall that is coloured here. This is the sanctuary area and you can see it's got the, the stone altar remaining. Um, and this is the, the central one for Armen and there's one either side for Mutt and Konsu and either side of that you've got Osiris and Ptah. 
Now, again, the guardians will sometimes let you climb up on the roof here. This is a very deserted temple. Um, hardly anybody comes here. Uh, so the guardians will, you know, they want a little bit of extra money or whatever. So they, they'll let you clamber up and, and you can see some stuff on the roof. You can see some graffiti. You can see, um, some other carvings up there, which are actually probably quite significant either for ritual or for recording of, um, the calendar and seasons and so forth. The carvings here, this is quality seti stuff. If you look at the collar of gold on that ram's head, now this is the bark of Armon and the prow has uh, this lovely ram on it and it's got collars of gold and a petrol and, and just see how they carve those individual um, rings of gold there and the hair on the ram. This is what Seti does best. He does beautiful, beautiful raised jewels. This um, is looking from the roof over across to the sacred well and the boundary wall there. It's it's not a lake here. It's a well, um, and um, the, it was probably used like they, they might have floated little boats or garlands of flowers or something like that or purification um now i've already discussed about purification in the, the sacred lakes were quite yucky um so i think that they must have used some kind of natural filtration system and i, I met a guest who was very into fish and he said you can use reed beds as natural filtration. So I think if these places were being used as purification, then we are got to be looking at some kind of cleansing of that water. Because it stinks, frankly. Um, this is the chapel to Ramses I. Uh, I took this quite early in the morning, so the balloons were up. So th this is the kind of view down that you can get of this area. Now, um, in the middle of this is the uh, false doors that would have allowed the spirit of Ramses to travel to the west. And that bit there is like a roller blind um, carved in stone. And you would, it, it, on the real door, it would have rolled down and closed it. But here they've just carved it in the stone showing that it's open for Ramses the first to go through to the west. Um, and there's three uh, chapels here. And in the front um, are pictures of um, the pharaoh offering to Armamut and Khonsu with the dead pharaoh standing behind him. So quite an unusual picture of a pharaoh offering to a, a dead pharaoh. So that is the Seti, the first uh, temple. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is the men that did the work on all these tombs and temples, where they lived, where they were buried, and um, their, the temples where the, they worshipped, which is at the workman's village at Daryl Medina. So that's the end of the SETI 1 module. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>